Hey, what's up? In this series, I'm going to show you how you can take this normal toaster model in Blender and turn it into a robot. We are going to do the modeling, the rigging, and the animation. Everything complete in this series. Okay, let's kick this off with the rigging tutorial. And as you can see, the rest is already done. But I figured it's always better to do the rig first when you do mechanical rigging because you're working with a lot of constraints and that means you don't really know if your wig is going to work so you should you know figure out the wig make a little like test animation just block it out and then you see okay now these are the constraints i can use and then you can model the other stuff around so for example here i knew i can get around with this bone only rotating on the z-axis therefore i can make this kind of joint right I don't want to model this joint before and then I put in the bones and I realized that needs to rotate in like this direction or something. I think constraints are actually pretty good for mechanical rigging simply because they just look better. You know, you don't want to have like these ball joints that I have here like in every place and just have this wig be like all wobbly and stuff. And so here I try to do that with the animation right. I'm gonna have this come out and then I have this one and this one rotate. And I try to just keep it one after another so it isn't like just one big wobbly um, shaky thing but it looks more robotic. I think of it like a, someone doing a robot dance. How you make it look more like a robot is you constrain your arm on like you know one axis and just move step by step. And if you pay attention to that in movies they love doing that and it has a reason it looks awesome. So I try to go in that direction. Uh, I should mention this is not really a beginner's tutorial, let's call this intermediate. I'll do my best to explain everything here step by step. But I'm just saying if you're a beginner and you have a hard time following this, don't feel bad. It's um, definitely more advanced stuff because you're using a lot of constraints and stuff. So if you've never done any rigging in Blender at all, this might be a bit overwhelming. But of course, give it a try. If you have a question, you can always leave a comment below. And with that said, let's get started. At the base of this wig is a good old IK, right? So first I have this root bone. That one doesn't do anything. It's really just, you know, for parenting stuff. You can see I have a bone parented here. Just good to have a bone that doesn't move so you can parent things. Um, we're kicking this off with an IK. So we have one, two, let me go into bone constraints here. So I have one bone, two bone, and then three, and this one has the IK constraint. So this is like the base of my arm. Um, chain length is obviously three. I don't use a pole target because it's bended and twisted and rotated in so many directions that that doesn't really work. You can have a pole target when you have like one nice curve, then it makes sense. But here, you know, we are rotating many different ways. And I have this one constraint on its y-axis right so y-axis is the green one you can see here so its own axis it can only rotate this way um, this one same thing here right in the bone tab inverse kinematics it's also can only rotate on the y and this one as i mentioned before it can rotate on the z so now the inverse kinematic is trying to figure out how do i get the tip of this bone to this bone by only using those rotations that I'm allowing it. Now I should mention when I start the animation, I don't actually use the IK, right? I have this influence here and I can animate that. So in the beginning, let's see all the way here, I'm really just rotating the bones manually. So I can have this coming out and like it moves out, rotates, and then I animate the influence that kicks in. Now here we are at full influence and now the IK took over, right? Uh, or to be called start off, so I can move this. Now it's just a good old IK. This is the IK target and it actually has two bone constraints here. Um, that is so it can follow the toast, right? Because at first I want to move this with the IK, so I full control and then you can see now the influence is going to kick in. And I want to copy the location of, let's see, this toast graph. You can see here, 
is just a little cube that is parented to the toes. So whenever the toes moves, whoops, move this a little bit less. So when the toes moves, you can see this uh, cube is moving along with it. Obviously, it's not going to get rendered. And this just, it's like a marker to tell me, okay, where do I need to position the tip of like this ball so I can uh, grab the toes. And to have it grab smoothly, I simply animate that influence, right? So I go from zero. So here it's whatever I insert as a keyframe, but then this one is going to take over. And when we are at one, now the tip of this is exactly where the toe scrap and select it. Hard to see, but you know, well, it's obviously right here in the center of this bone. And I'm doing a similar thing with this one here. Let's go back a little bit with the influence is zero. So this bone is simply parented to the tip of the IK, while the arm just continues and it's just uh, to rotate this hat. I have this hat attached to it. And I also want to synchronize this with the toast. So here I have this copy rotation. Oh, and I hope it's not confusing. The, the other one, that's when I catch the uh, second toast, right? I can switch over. But yeah, so for now, um, I just do the same. I have the influence at first it's zero. So I do the rotation with keyframes myself. And now I animate the influence. And that means that the hand is going to synchronize to the toast. And the cool thing is I can easily modify the toast. I can have it rotate faster, jump higher. And you know, this, those bone constraints, those two, they're going to make sure that it's always going to synchronize with the toast. And so at this stage, I can actually grab the toast, right? And I move it. And now the bone constraints, they're really doing all the work. And this is how I did the animation at this stage. I just animated the toast. The and the next thing here is this little claw. This is just another IK, right? So this bone is the center of the claw, right? This one is uh, parented to it. And we go back a little bit where we have, whoops, full control over it. And here we have some more bones parented to it. I move the claw only with one bone because I know I want this to be synchronized right so they're always going to move all four fingers are going to move the same so i only need to uh, animate one and i do that with those three bones um just another ik this is parented to the center of the claw so the boat is with it and then we have one two three and this is just another ik chain link obviously three this one has a pole target so i don't get this uh weird flipping um this might be the pole target. Yeah, it's the grab pole. Uh, just to make sure that, let me see when I move this. If this were here, then you get this weird flipping. This can happen with IKs, right? And as I mentioned before, when you have this nice smooth curve, then a pole target makes sense because now the X axes are going to try to rotate towards it. And the control for this one is just another bone. I can move this here. And it is parented to the center, right? So it's not part of the IK, so it's just parented to, to this one. But of course, when I rotate this, I rotate the, uh, the IK target with it. And here I have this copy location constraint. The reason for that is a pole target is going to override your IK constraints. So here, obviously, in the bone tab, I lock the um, Y and Z axis, right? They're only going to rotate, as you can see, on these X axes. X and X, and here also we have this X axis. That's the only one they can rotate. And otherwise, it's just going to look wobbly and the, the mesh doesn't make sense because the joint is only made for this one. So the problem is a pole target is going to override that. And I can get around that by making sure that this one, the IK target, is just perfectly aligned to my fingers. 
And that's why I have this constraint, right? Um, I can reduce that. You can see now I can move it quite freely. But now, thanks to the pole target, um, what you can see here, right? That's not supposed to happen. It's supposed to only rotate on the X, but it says, you know what? Rotating towards the pole target, that's more important to me than your uh, stupid IK constraints. But that sucks. So I simply have this copy location. And now when I move this, just I'm trying to move it freely, right? But it can only move on this axis. And yeah. I think this is pretty much it for this week. I hope that wasn't too overwhelming. In the next video, I showed you how I actually modeled this thing around after I made this wig, which can be a bit tricky. But as I mentioned before, don't do mechanical rigging, um, like modeling first and then the wig. And then you realize you got to do the modeling all over again. It's just going to cost you a lot of time. And then of course also in the next few videos we are gonna do this entire animation which i think came out pretty cool uh definitely was a lot of fun to do that and i hope you enjoy that and learn something as always thanks for watching subscribing is also appreciated liking this video and of course questions feedback just leave a comment below thank you and goodbye